So hi, I'm Piotr, and I would like to share a few things I've learned about graph visualization in DFGS. And to start with, uh, well, I'm a PhD student in quantum physics, and I do many different things, but among, uh, among them, I play with uh, graphs, especially for some quantum processes like transmission of excitation from light uh, to energy uh, in, in a plant. And many problems there are very si uh, similar to problems uh, that people have been analyzing graphs of friends uh, on Facebook or, or, in other or in other disciplines. But I took a short break just to, to be here and uh, <laughs> work in a vibrant startup uh, community as a data scientist. And again, uh, graphs uh, happen here very often. But, I, but I'm doing data-driven business analytics. And, and when it comes to uh, graphs, it's, I, I don't do graph visualization um, professionally. Plus, it's a thing, it's a thing that uh, happens on site. Uh, but, but it's also a thing that uh, I like a lot. And I, and I enjoy doing it um, very much. When it comes to DFGS, uh, there are t t two great things about it. One thing is that, well, it takes not much code to produce something uh, that is uh, nice, interactive. You can uh, show your data to someone else in a way that is engaging and, well, is able to, to show many different features. And the second thing is that there are many examples. So uh, I, d I don't know how everyone works here, but for me, well, Sometimes it's hard to start when there are just some instructions or uh, there's just uh, documentation. But when there are many, many examples, it's very easy just to take one, take one thing, modify it, modify it, modify it, modify it, until it, it is something completely different but the thing that I'm looking for. And even, even better if there are many uh, places I can take code from, combine it to something which is uh, good for my purpose. <coughs> So it's like if, I, I don't know what's, what's the level of experience here, but because I, I guess it's very diverse. But if someone just wants to start playing with it, there's no better way but to go uh, different GSS site, take a look at uh, the simplest force uh, graph visualization and sta start tinkering with it. But when it comes to every, uh, every, doing any, uh, everything, there are always three questions. Why, what, and how? And I will try to ad address uh, them in the opposite order, perhaps uh, omitting why. So when it comes to visual, visual, visualizing graphs, the simplest uh, and perhaps more and the most important thing is uh, the uh, node size. So for example, if you have, uh, visualize uh, relations between different countries or different uh, tag counts or anything, Sometimes you want to have uh, nodes of different size to, to their count, and also you don't want to make them too cluttered. So this is a very nice parameter in DFGS that allows you to make uh, nodes repelling each other, and more or less if you do it that way, they uh, won't overlap with each other. It's not a guarantee, but it's a rule of thumb, and for most things it works good enough. Of course there are things like collision detection, but this thing usually it's fine. And the second thing, when it comes to graphs, is, is color. It's a, well, it's, it's a thing which is trivial, but uh, from uh, coding side, but depending on uh, our purpose, well, it can express many things. So sometimes you want to put the emphasis on that the every node is different, every node has its own properties, relations to others, etc. Sometimes, which is in some sense the most graph-like thing, want to put emphasis on communities. So in general, uh, nodes leave, <laughs> uh, nodes connected with the edges leave in a uh, very high dimensional space. So when you flatten it to just two dimensions, sometimes we lose a lot of features, we lose a uh, big picture how things are grouped together. And I'm not going to, uh, uh, to talk about uh, community detection algorithms because it's a topic on its own. There are actually a few nice tutorials on it. 
But in general, for example, this is uh, uh, I mean, see that uh, they were looking at graph of uh, connections from emails. So basically, NSA can uh, uh, can see that okay, this this group is uh, your family, this group is your your friends, and this group is people you are conspiring with, for example. And also, there are some other uh, features in graphs that uh, we might want to visualize. So, for example, this graph is uh, a graph uh, of mathematical theorems and lemmas. And we are interested in the distance between two different uh, concepts. So, if they are directly related or maybe related by one neighbor or by few, and you can use, you can put an emphasis on distance from a certain thing. Of course, it's one of many, many possibilities. And also, well, last not least, we can just use color to uh, show some properties. So, for example, uh, I worked on a visualization of uh, themes uh, found in a set of Polish uh, books. And I wanted to tell something more than, uh, than just, OK, there are some themes, there's some are more prevalent than, than others. And I tried to color them according to their type. So, for example, you have some, uh, some things like house, which are more like everyday life. And there are things like spirit, which is more for poems or drama performances. So maybe I can, OK, sheet, yes, it was. So for this visualization, and I also try to uh, balance visibility of uh, labels. In some sense that uh, on one hand side, when there are no labels, you have a beautiful, uh, very often you have a beautiful graph, but uh, conveying the information. On the other, well, when there are <laughs> labels everywhere, you see, a ton, uh, you see tons of labels and nothing more. And not, uh, so for example, this is one of many, many ways to show neighborhood of graphs. Because, OK, if a, if a natural visualization ha, uh, abstracts neighborhood, well, then it's hard to tell anything. So going. OK, but uh, there's one, uh, when it comes to graph, I ask, uh, the second uh, question was, was, was what? Because in some contexts, uh, it's very straightforward to say, OK, nodes are people uh, on Facebook, and the links are people who are friends on Facebook. Because you have zero one, zero one uh, uh, friend uh, or not friend. But in most, most cases, you don't uh, start with such clean data. You have some real objects that are related to each other. And the question is how to abstract such a relationship uh, as a graph. Of course, for many things, you can just cannot. For, uh, for others, uh, it's an approximation which you can do in different ways. And for example, if you want to look at, uh, make graphs of uh, concurrences, so, for, for, so, uh, so from things that are, that, are, that are seen very often with each other. So for example, you start with some statistical data. So maybe it's this one. So for, uh, so for example, you, s you study some statistical data about correlations between different things and you want to cluster them. One of ways of, ways of looking at it is looking at a correlation matrix. And you can actually also it's, it's different JS when you can play with many, many variables. So even if you have 100 variables, still you can sort among them, see which things are related to each other. And you also you can uh, work with neighborhood graphs in that way. But uh, how to extract when uh, to make a link? Because every f everywhere you have some value. You have almost ne never zero in real data. So, so for example, um, there was one project uh, about uh, looking at commonly used uh, Unix commands. So, if, so for example, if someone uses a lot of Python commands, it's very common that someone uses uh, Django commands, etc. Here is uh, a network for uh, super user do commands. 
And, but the, the, the question is how to convert s such uh, points of data from each user to, uh, to a graph. Because, OK, it's not a graph. It's just like a collection of things that are occurring with each other. But to be more precise and to, to, uh, to make this problem a bit simpler, let's uh, think about one thing. That, uh, imagine that we want to make a graph of tags from Stack Overflow. So we have qu questions. Uh, each question has uh, a few tags. Uh, and and that, that's it. You don't want to have any expert knowledge, anything else. So to make the story short, it's easy to get a graph of that sort. That you automatically know, cluster together things that are similar, not because of any expert knowledge, not because uh, some uh, of context of questions, only because of concurrences of, of, uh, uh, of tags in questions. And to do that, uh, okay, one to, one to do that is to look, for example, at uh, tags that uh, are occurring much more often than uh, on average. So, uh, for example, one simple formula for that is to look at probability of uh, having two tags together or the probability of having uh, one tag times having a second tag in the same question. So basically, this thing is what we have, and the thing uh, below is the thing that we would expect if, if tags were not related at all. So for example, if it's like I get uh, heads, and uh, second is uh, uh, there, will be, there will be fog uh, tomorrow. And well, it is one we, they are not related. I can say, OK, I'm taking uh, four as cutoff. So if something uh, is here four, I'm taking it as a, as a link. And as you see, it's, it works to some extent. So you have some groups from web development, from low level stuff, for, for data structures, etc. Well, it's like I'm, I'm happy that uh, no, <laughs> nobody tried to kick me out of this room because it was not D3JS. Uh, that's something different. But the good news is uh, just right now I'm working on a similar uh, kind of thing, but in uh, D3JS, also to, ha to make it much more interactive. Because you have some big tags that uh, you see uh, from big distance, but also there are some mi micro communities that would be nice to explore. And going uh, back with things that uh, it's, it's good to think about every time you make any kind of graphization are two things I have been talking about. So how to choose nodes and edges, uh, how to use size and color to hide or emphasize uh, things you, uh, you want, how to play with labels to provide some information but not to make too much noise. And things I actually have been talking about, about using uh, force wisely, making things not, not overlapping, uh, and making it interactive, or perhaps if it's a big graph, uh, using zoom, which also is, is very easy in different JS, or uh, making some ego graphs. When you click on one node, you only see a subset. What do you, what do you mean by force used wisely? <laughs> so I mean, force, uh, by, uh, for, uh, by force, I mean, the different JS uh, force uh, layout, and you can, uh, depending on what you want, you can play some tricks. So for example, you can uh, make some links uh, longer than others, or you can make uh, things happening on some triggers. So for example, you want you might uh, want to implement collision detection, so you will ensure that uh, nodes are not overlapping each other, or you can you might have some points gathering. Uh, mattering <laughs> nodes. So uh, depending on your purpose, you, you might want to tinker with it a bit. So maybe wisely is like, well, a word for, use more for fun than having a well precise meaning. And when it comes to the uh, math cheat sheet, actually it's, it's very uh, short and simple. The one, one, uh, one thing is that most of the time you, you don't want to have uh, nodes overlapping each other. So if nodes are different size, it's, it's very nice and very simple to adjust uh, repulsion so that, uh, well, repulsion is related to their size. 
And the second thing, that if you are dealing with uh, statistical data, this formula is very, very powerful. So it's very simple, but it, I have played with, it, with many different kinds of data, and most of the time it works out of the box. And uh, if someone is starting uh, play, uh, his or her adventure with different JS, one of nice issues is, is this uh, collection of charts. You can look only for uh, networks, for example. There are also some very nice tutorials, so it will be later, so, it's, so you can use it later. And also one thing which is always dangerous to say on every kind of, uh, of, kind of uh, events like, like that, is that, okay, so but what is the competition? So what are good other uh, possible choices one could consider? One is a desktop application, uh, Gephi, which is nice, uh, uh, for, uh, for the fact that you can do some mathematical processing with it, you can adjust uh, s uh, single nodes, etc. But it's more for static things, so you cannot th that easily make something interactive, playing with data from the database, etc. Another one is SigmaJS, which is very nice for graph. You can visualize very fast uh, big graphs, but also it's well for graphs. So you cannot do, uh, you, ca you cannot uh, make it that different. You cannot. Uh, do anything with that, because it's one purpose thing. Okay. So, uh, so more or less, it's what I wanted to, to, to present. And uh, so, it's a question. If there are any questions uh, from you, I would be very happy to answer. And if they aren't, it's a question of, uh, from me to you, uh, which is not a particular question. Just I'm curious if any of you have devised a way to make uh, labels not overlapping in a way that it's not painful. <laughs> Spread your nodes out. Well? <laughs> Spread your nodes out. Spread, to? Spread the nodes out, yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of like a joke, but uh, yeah. Just don't, you know, don't let them overlap. Yeah, but the, <laughs> really far apart. Uh, yeah but the thing is, uh, with such things that uh, very often you have a lot of nodes, okay, so, you want to have nodes uh, close to each other, but lab is not. And lab is, it's, uh, so. You could also um, basically add your labels as nodes, but they wouldn't necessarily be visible, and they would have a gravity pushing them away from other nodes. So you mean just um, adding select? It, again, wouldn't work in all cases, but if it, you, may, you may find it being more useful than just having uh, labels arbitrarily. So it's like adding additional uh, points for each uh, node to. There'll be <laughs> nodes in your in your graph, and they'll be being calculated, but you won't actually draw them. They won't actually be part of. Um, they won't be visible DOM elements, uh, but they will be part of the um, the graph data itself. Mm -hmm. I think there's a plugin that does this: force labels by by Ziggy Johnson. Yeah. And so basically, the you know the node you have the label, um, it attaches a new link which is kind of this metagraph, which the link is connected to a node, which is the label. And the labels also are adjusting against each other. So I need to look at it, so I Forced didn't labels. find it. Also, uh, check out, there's an example, the Dorling, Dorling cartogram has an example of a 2D constraint relaxation. Mm -hmm. So it's a, you might check that one out too. So all it does is just see, if, and it does it with circles, if two circles are overlapping, it pushes them apart a little bit. It's not a force directed thing, it's just this extra force. And you can layer forces on top of each other mm -hmm. with a force directed graph. So that's constraint relaxation like that yeah. technique. Also, and that's most of the other articles called uh, force based label placement, which is pretty much like what uh, other people said, but there is like a graph for the skills. So, most of the can you go back to um, show comments and kind of <coughs> cool. talk about uh, what links do you do over there? Okay, no, it's not my visualization. No, it's not yours. Yeah, but I, I, can say what's the, what's, I can say what's there. So basically, this is not done by this observer to expect a ratio, but just by correlation of vectors. So just for each user, you take a vector of commands they use. and. Uh, you measure distance between uh, two uh, commands as uh, 
vector uh, well, correlation of two vectors with well as many dimensions as, as users, which works to an extent, but, uh, but the thing is that it has also some problems. Yeah. And in my opinion, this uh, observed expected ratio is, is better. Some approach to uh, visualize the data like this, uh, some methodology, or it just comes like a creativity? Of uh, well, it's like, uh, for, uh, for my stuff, mostly it's, uh, you would say it, it's, it's creativity in the sense that, uh, well, it's visualization. So it's uh, it uh, just I want to, to show uh, it in a way that I would like to see it. As, uh, uh, when, it comes to, uh, when it comes to making links bet uh, between things, so, so for example this one, okay, of course, uh, this for is hocus pocus. It, it depends on, on size of graph and uh, What's, uh, it's a good number to make it, well, nice. Uh, but basically... Yeah, Taylor, I think that would be well? It's a, it's a tailoring. Yes, yes, so it's like a threshold, actually. But it's... Uh, and, but this thing is, well, actually a very fundamental uh, quantity in probability, so, uh, saying that, uh, well, by definition, uh, things are independent if this thing is, is just one. And if it's above one, it's in some sense they are, uh, they are collated, so it's... No, it does not depend on kind of system or, or anything. So it's why it works in many cases. Um, just one, one thought, and it's probably familiar to some folks in here, but um, there's a, you know, work the last few years on, on hive plots. Mm -hmm. It's like a different way of laying out a graph when it gets too jumbled like this big you know, you have a lot of nodes and they start links and edges start to overlap. Um, and there's at least one high plot example, the D3 uh, example. Mm -hmm. So that's another way. It basically, you know, you, nodes get assigned to axes and then they, they there are these radial axes and they, um, you know, are, so basically all of your edges are radial edges and then you don't have overlapping nodes or edges. Um, just another. Thought in space. I mean, this, this one article is like, don't make graph hairballs. It was uh, against using some, well, things that are nice, you, but, they, but they explain nothing. Yeah. In such a case, says you need to have, you know, some structure behind it. So it's the same thing as, you know, having a bipartite graph. You, when you know that there are only two parties, they link together. And this kind of extension of uh, this idea. Thanks so much. It was a great introduction to grass.